believe we filled just enough time. Uh, we'll see you guys in three minutes when it doesn't work. <laughs> Go back to England. Uh, cool. We're back here, and we're hoping that we're about to get into game. Skimmy. Uh, fourth time lucky. Is that is, is that a a phrase now? Uh, hopefully. Here we go. Done. I see a draft. I too see a draft. I see a game loading in 27 seconds. I like it. I also like the fact that Nick is like, I have multiple questions and then stalled out his Teemo versus Malphite question because I have a sneaking suspicion that no one likes Nick and no one's actually emailing him <laughs> or sending him questions. It's not true. It's not true. Biggest flop of a segment ever. <laughs> Bryce Cod, you're small. <laughs> I don't care what COD players Cricket still say. sucks. <laughs> well, let's go. Avant up against the likes of the Bombers. We finally get into a game with two distinct giraffes. Yeah, and I, uh, once again, really like what Avant have put together here. However, good scaling on the side of the Bombers, and they're going to have to play through Mimic and Wilder. One thing that was a strength of the Bombers' last split is how well Mimic and Volkan were able to team up and be able to take these 2v2 victories. Well, they got the Aurelia and Rek'Sai, one of the strongest early game 2v2s going up against Sejuani and Camille, who were no slouches in their own right. Uh, Chippies and Sybil have a lot of work to do here today. That they do. That they do indeed. So... We jump onto the rift. It's time to get things underway. It's time to see exactly how teams decide to posture things at. Quite honestly, I would not be surprised to see the likes of a potential invade here, knowing it is Isles on that aggressive support, but would also prefer to see a more passive start. Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, Alistar has always been one of those champions that if you face check into him level one can have massive impact, but kind of sucks on the invade because only has the pulverize really available. Uh, taking a look around Summoner's Rift, it's going to be, once again, that cleanse locked in for Shockdown in the bottom 2v2. Uh, and it's going to be Grasp on Chippies in the top lane. So nothing like the Conqueror, a little bit more of a defensive route for the Camille. Yeah, not going to want to be falling victim too easily to this Aurelia, the first of the split so far. Still, as you say, picking up that 100% involvement rate. So let's see... If that can actually justify the means with the performance by the Bombers. Yeah, and giving Aurelia over to Mimic, who was the last split's MVP, is certainly a risky call. Bombers, uh, Avant must have known that he was going to take this. You see, actually, Rek'Sai going to solo start the camp, and it's going to be late here, whereas the leash is going to be in effect for Sybil from Chippies. Obviously, melee champions really help out that Sejuani. Went back and got himself an early sweeper there. So wonder whether he can impact a gank because starting a camp solo as what is the faster jungler does really hurt, in my opinion, if you are going to be wilder. Yeah, and as you say about that 2v2 power matchup between them in the top lane, does give Sybil a bit of a chance to uh, decide how he wants to operate things. We saw what he did yesterday, a gank in the mid lane, denied by one auto attack into a straight up gank to the top lane. Very active on the Sejuani if given half the chance. And Sybil should have been able to complete both ganks. I think he actually left the auto attack there for Miru to be yeah. able to pick up, which uh, unfortunately was cancelled. Um, otherwise, Sybil certainly would have been able to grab both. As now, Miru goes in. Lots of aggression so far so early on as Miru uh, takes a bit of a harassing exchange, pretty much evening out the uh, trade between the two of them. Potions now. having to be utilized as a result. Yeah, and now it kind of comes down to which jungler gets here first. You see Miru has ran with the Corrupting Potion, so he should be a little bit healthier after all those trades, but now the Doran Drink is going to start kicking in. See whether teleports are going to be used to get back into this lane nice and early. Yeah, both junglers, however, are posturing for that middle lane. You can see pings left and right, considering where are they going to be coming from. Flashes are available. Wilder flashing on in for that knockup, and Miru getting a response as well, but the red buff is going to be far too strong in terms of locking him in place, Azir picking up first blood. Yeah, really nicely done there from Wada. I said it's going to be which jungler gets there first, able to spend the resources early. We'll get the teleport out as well. Now Sybil potentially looking in the top side of the map. This could be a 2v2 as Wada also heading up here. Chippies wants to go in. He is indeed. He gets the hook shot. He gets the landing on that one as well. But there is still a red buff. Consider that onto Sybil. There's going to be the TP coming in as well. That could be from Ryoma making trying to things happen. They do indeed do a lot of damage onto Sybil, and that's going to hurt him in terms of being able to carry on in that jungle. We'll give Wilder the free opportunity to sweep, to invade, and 
potentially dive. Yeah, absolutely. You see right now that Wilder wants to be able to go aggressively onto Sibyl. Will potentially find him here. He's diving on in. He's looking for that one there. Sibyl getting dropped very, very low. Certainly was. However, Teleport also coming back in. They're going to continue to look for this. You see Ryoma also missed a wave in mid lane. So that's a lot of resources used to try and pick off Sybil, but it's not going to be successful and everyone will just go back to lanes here. They're all in some trouble though. They are. Looking to take him out once more. The damage is there. Not the biggest chunk, but looking to abuse the fact that he does not have that summoner whilst Ryoma still does have that flash intact. And bot lane has been, I want to say, aggressive, but no kill attempts at this stage. Definitely poke shots far, but both tanky supports looking to be the ones to initiate, but also to peel and protect. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that that's the big thing, right? Is it's going to be a lot of whittling down in this bottom lane. Rogue going to get some good sight right now of Sybil taking away the blue buff. Should, however, be uncontested as he does have Smite available. It's going to be completed jungle item versus no shop right now for Wilder, who will go back. And uh, I think that this is going to be a fairly standard game. The only lane I expect to maybe explode and swing heavily is going to be that top side of the map. Yep. Um, but with junglers, you know, not pathing yet towards that, uh, it should be rather calm here. Both scuttles have, in fact, been picked up here by the bombers, so presence in the river is definitely in their favor to scout out potential ganks from the ever-present Sybil on that Sejuani. And that's kind of what happens, right, when your mid laner falls down that fast. Uh, kind of meant that Sybil wasn't going to be able to pick either up. Uh, actually, no. Uh, yeah, Sybil not going to be able to pick either up, just because, you know, without mid lane priority, Miru falling down early, having to teleport back, wasn't going to be able to help him in the 2v2. Um, so, nothing really surprising there. I think good CS under that turret. However, Shock's still about a wave down. And Bombers will just take, you know, the 700 gold lead. 600 of that probably first blood in the assist. And then a little bit of a farm advantage in the bottom lane, uh, heading towards that area. Pings are going out, however, as Sybil does place down the control wards. Actually, I'd sell a lie. He goes to take out the control ward, if anything. Looking to try and claim a little bit of vision protection, but he is turning his attention once more to that top side of the map. He really wants to try and unlock Chippy's potential and make sure that this uh, Aurelia doesn't get too out of hand. Yeah, exactly right. You can see once again Mimic now this time with the level 6 pushing back into Chippy's. No real gank going to be available there from Sybil. Needs Chippy's to be able to hit that level 6. However, once he is, you know, that Hextech ultimatum holding the Aurelia in place yeah. and then just the auto attacks into the easy stun for the uh, Sejuani. Could be very, very easy. Uh, Hexeg is a beautiful, beautiful ultimate for locking down key targets. But definitely the likes of Luch on a hero this time with a bit of uh, mobility. That was the problem for me yesterday, especially on the very immobile Varus. Yep. The likes of Luch's uh, Kaiser. Had the ability to dash and speed boost out of harm's way. Yeah, it certainly does, however. Still quite difficult to, you know, get ahead in games. We've kind of seen a couple of failed Kaisers today already, I think present in both of the losses. However, this time around has found a slight CS advantage and enough priority over this bottom lane to actually be able to start up the Dragon with Wilder. That's going to be an Ocean Drake, so very, very useful in this early game with the additional, you know, regeneration to both the health and mana. And I don't think there's a single lane right now in the Bombers that does not just straight up benefit from this one. You can make a massive case for the bottom lane where we talk about it being whistled on down and then there's uh, tank supports coming in to try and prevent anything. But definitely in the top lane as well as the jungle, it's going to definitely uh, allow them to sustain, be ever present and keep up the strength, which is their early game. Yeah, completely agree. And I think, you know, even the top lane where these all in trades start to become a factor, all of a sudden, if you don't execute Mimic, then he's just going to be able to regen up underneath his turret with that team at Corrupting Potion as well as the Dragon. This could be a potential good target for a dive with a huge wave being sucked into Mimic, but it's going to be a red buff invade instead coming across from Sybil. Sybil wants it. Sybil has support as they go in for this one. It's looking like a 3v2 at this stage with it's, uh, Sybil jumping on out of harm's way as Wilder picks up that kill. Does he have the flash? No, he does not because he's used it already, but he will fall on down. Miru picking up the one kill to make it a one for one trade. Both junglers falling down. Yeah, really strange play there from Sybil. Burns the flash while he's being Rek'Sai ultimate. Kind of made Wilder nearly be able to escape there. Of course, you can't flash the damage that comes across anymore. However, mid laner there in the Silas picking up 
the kill is very big for Avant Gaming. That was starting to become an ugly lane already down 14 CS. So Miru with that goal, uh, looking a little bit better. He had a rough uh, early game actually last time after, you know, double summoner spells were burnt in the Yasuo matchup. Yeah. Wasn't really able to main CS. I think he fell down about 20. And you can already see even with the kill down 600 gold against Ryoma. And the rest of the uh, members on either side, pretty even. As we expected, nothing really to see at this stage, but nine minutes into this one, bit of a lull in the map as we wait for those objectives to spawn on up. Rift Herald, having been taken already, is looking to be utilized in some fashion. Yeah, we'll see whether that's okay. case. See Miru once again going in here in the mid lane. Miru's dropping low. Miru will fall on Dan once again. Did. Bear in mind, have that flash available, but just the amount of damage that came out from the gank, from Rek'Sai, from the Ryoma as well. Miru deciding, look, it's not even worth me burning this. Yeah, absolutely. And I think a little bit inexcusable there. He actually initiated the fight onto Ryoma, knows that he needs to be able to play aggressive, and just gets bopped immediately now. Two members heading down behind. Wilder actually behind Isles. Needs to be careful because if you get headbutted into the turret from this situation, can be very rough. Now, the jungle is just past each other like ships in the night. No action going to be happening down in the bottom lane. Scouts out Sybil, going for the blue. They don't seem to be doing too much at this stage. The bottom lane of the bombers are considering it, but we'll stand around and be content with just picking up Scuttle to once again confirm and re-establish this river control that they've had for the best part of 10 minutes now. Yeah, absolutely. And now it's leading to like a 2,000 gold lead. And you can see that so much of that is going to be in the mid lane. 25 CS up. Right now, if you are Ryoma, you can see every other lane kind of just farming slightly ahead of their opponents. And this is what the Bombers are so good at, establishing that pressure game. Uh, and a much more stable early game from the Bombers this time around. You know, not the chaos that we saw last time against Order. And it's tough. It really is tough. Uh, you know, you're looking at Azir already going for the Stinger. They've both gone for Tier 2 boots, but you're looking at a Dark Seal on that Silas and you're thinking, well, you're, uh, you're working overtime to try and make something happen at this stage. You're relying merely on that level 6 impact when you can utilize those ultimates. What are you looking to try and steal? And I'm looking to turn things around, try and turn the tide of this event. But a minute left, we have to wait for that Infernal. Yeah, absolutely. You can see uh, kind of the Spidey Sense tingling for Mimic in the top lane as well. Pings out the fact that uh, Isles had made the long roam up there. Left shock to 1v2 bottom lane but really good river vision all over right now for this bomber lineup. However, they're going to go in. They are indeed. They're looking to dance and leg sweep as well as Chippies jumps in and he jumps out as well. Mimic getting uh, cloned upon. That's the ultimatum to try and make things happen right there as the kill comes down. Rek'Sai getting shut off. And they want to try and find more if they can. Now, as the Void Herald that I uh, alluded to before that I just said, it was picked up. It wasn't. I tell a lie. It happens. But three kills to two now as the Bombers do take a bit of a blow. Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, that was a really well set up gank there for Avant Gaming. They also rotate their duo lane up, which means that they will take a crack at this Rift Herald. It's going to be quite difficult because as you can see, the Bombers want to contest here. Miru looking to stop them. Note the position of Alistair on the side. Kind of zoned off a little bit for the most part there by Ryoma with the Azir doing work with those spears, with those guards, with everything. Out. They all have to dance across. And they do successfully get away, but summoners were burnt. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just one flash on the back end of that, which is probably worthwhile for the Rift Herald, especially if they can drop it pre-14 minutes. So really nice play there for Avant. However, now it comes down to the Infernal Dragon. You see already Chippy's heading in that direction. Luch goes in. Luch does go in. Indeed, he goes hard. And that's going to be a Galio ult to try and make things happen. They're flashing forward to try and make sure that it finds no value at all. The Indomitable Spirit coming out to try and make sure that Alistair is tanky, but Rek'Sai finding one. And Silas then dropping on down, Ooh, but shot. Elster is doing work as he tries to get everybody locked in place. Does not seem to be enough. It is, in the end, two for two trades. Yeah, really nicely done there by the Avant Gaming lineup. However, it was a 4v5 as Mimic just sits there and wails away at the top turret. Will not be able to take the last plate. But the fact now that Miru has been able to get himself those three kills. Now, three, three, and one. Starting to play his way a little bit more back into this game was pretty instrumental in yesterday's matchup. However, you see all the turret plates coming across and makes it a 2,000 gold lead. As we take another look at it, this was uh, Luch getting 
caught out of position as Miru dives in on him. Uh, just big damage coming across for the Silas. And then shock on the back end. Nice Miasma holding Rogue in place meant that that fight was certainly going to finish in their favor. And so much value was gained by the Bombers. They pushed in top lane, got some plating, and then got a Drake as well. Well, actually, no, I tell a lie. They actually stopped the Drake. They were working on the Infernal. Yeah, no, I think they picked it up. Oh, the graphic just not just about there to we go. go. There. there we go. So, yeah, big advantages picked up for them in that regard. Yep. So, for a macro sense, they're starting to open things up. Still retaining that 2k gold lead. Yeah, absolutely. However, now the fact that, you know, you've got one item on the Silas, you've got yourself that Sheen in the top lane, a slight advantage for Chippies. And we've seen Sybil play through these lanes very, very successfully. They go again. They do indeed. They jump right on top of Mimic and they say, Good night, sweet Prince. But TP's come in and Bombers want to make things happen. Ryoma starts it off with the ultimate. They lock them in place. Sybil's here. So much pain. Can the prison do anything? It can't at this stage. Camille, the first casualty. They dash on through and they go hard. They get the double. They're looking for the triple. And Miru falling on down. Azir. 4-0-3, picks up a double kill. Yeah, Ryuma with the teleport, able to arrive in the nick of time there for the Bombers. Mimic paid the price ultimately for his team, but they come out massively ahead. I think that was a slight misplay. I think they could have tried to stall that one a little bit better for Miru to be able to arrive. Instead, they looked for the 2v2 very early on. And the first turret will fall down. Rift Herald wasn't being dropped. While the plating was available, you can see right now it's a huge lead. 4,000 gold for the Bombers. Small skirmishes that are working their way towards big advantages is the narrative that I'm running with at this stage here, Spawn. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and it's been repetitive engages from the Avant Gaming lineup, like looking to try and push the tempo of this game, but dealt with very nicely from the Bombers. All that experience, you know, that championship caliber team coming across right now. Uh, however, you would say that the bottom lane, once again, which was the lane that was kind of bullied by Order yesterday, is starting to course correct for Avant Gaming. They have themselves that Seraph's Embrace have been able to catch up in CS. And um, we'll see whether Shock's able to get something done in this mid to late game. Yeah, definitely want to pick up a few Infernals for their end. The amount of damage that that can then accentuate the likes of them and Miru who has now completed that proto belt, so one item is now online, thankfully for him. Be working next towards that, uh, that hourglass. Yeah, absolutely. You can see uh, actually a big item coming out for Rek'Sai as well. Wider, not going for the offensive route uh, with his... Oh, actually, hold that thought. Isles doesn't go over the wall. Going to actually be a Rift Herald spawn in the bottom lane. You can see Mimic still on the top side of the map with so much time. Potential dive, however, on the cards is all the pings are coming across. They are indeed. The Rift Herald goes in and it goes in big. Chippies does have the teleport and Aurelia has to actually manually roam on down. Currently sitting in mid lane, so they stem the bleeding for this stage. The turret does still remain. There is no objective with no Drake for another two minutes, so Bombers are quite happy with this one. Yeah, I mean, that's a great defense of the bottom lane turret. You could see the Levant rotating, you know, all five members down there wanted to be able to open up the map, however. Just means that Chippies misses out on about a wave and a half of farm and not even able to find that fight. Uh, I think this game right now is being played very fairly on Bomber's side. Uh, they kind of have the read on the game state and are able to constantly kind of repel that unorthodox style of Avant Gaming. They're setting the tone is, is how I'd phrase it. They are really setting the tone as to this is our game plan, this is how we want to execute it. And Avant, you have to conform to that. And if you don't like it, well, we'll just pick up a few kills here and there and make sure that you know that this is our game to claim. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, that next dragon is probably going to be centered around the Ocean Drake, uh, that next big fight. And we'll see whether Avana are able to get the shops in because you can see right now, kind of sitting, I would assume, on a lot of gold. Uh, and, you know, with only a minute, not enough time to really get a reset in and be able to make their way to that objective. So might just have to let it go. Moby boots compared to the tier one boots of the Galios. So Alistair looking to try and be the roaming threat, which hasn't really been much of a uh, status at this stage. Yeah. For the most part, has been babysitting uh, Shock to make sure that yeah, the tier was unlocked, the Archangel was evolved, and we'll find some strength sub-20 minutes into the mid-late game. Yeah, and you can see right there, 1,700 gold on the AD carry, uh, or well, on the mage there <laughs> for Shock, as well as, you know, about 1,100 gold on the Alistar. We'll finally go back to base and still try and make their way towards this Dragon team fight. So I'd argue right now, you know, Pretty big position of power for the Cassiopeia. Probably comes back with something like a little bit of uh, penetration there. 
in, you know, nullifying orb. Actually, it goes for just the components. Maybe going to be a Rylai's Crystal Scepter. Yeah. Scepter picked up if you're not going towards the completed half items. Just some more controlling elements to try and allow yeah. them to lock players down from a ranged element compared to what Sybil's able to do on this Sejuani. Bombers will take the advantage. They know that they are ahead by a 5k margin. They know that there's no wards here at this stage with the sweepers having been used. They're going to walk on in, look to pick up their second Ocean Drake. And as it would seem, Avant not even interested. Yeah, very interesting non-contest there from Avant Gaming. You know, I feel like they do have quite a good Brawl Comp right now. And with the Rek'Sai going for a more tanky route, probably not going to be able to assassinate someone like Shock on the back line. Can fight front to back. However, you know, with the position that Ryoma's is in currently, certainly makes a little bit of a sen uh, sense to proceed with some caution. Mimic, once again, will be the area that they look to attack in this top lane. Now, here we go again. It's round number two to try and shut down this Irelia. Yes, there's no bounty, but this hero does dumb, dumb things if left to our own device. As Galio comes Ooh. in to try and provide some support, they're going to lock multiple members in place. The taunt, are you kidding me? Galio going absolutely huge as Azir rocks up to the party and makes things happen. Avant are running. They are so, so scared of what they've just got themselves into. Shocks falls on down. That's the double kill. And the bombers say, did you know that Baron spawns in 20 seconds? Your members are down. We're going for you. Yeah, potentially. You can see, meanwhile, in the bottom lane, they also were able to pick up a kill onto Miru. This is a 2v1 turret dive, so bombers win both sides of the matchup. It's going to be Luch picking up that kill as well as Zatara. And now that's an 8,000 gold lead. Bombers just explode this game. Running away with this one. Really, really solidifying their position. And we talk about them being the ones with a game plan, being the ones to execute it. Pretty much flawless for the most part. 11 kills to 5. There have been moments where ganks have been successful. But, you know, if you're looking at the key characters, there are bounties that are definitely justified by how strong their impact is in these team fights. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Ryom has played a flawless game so far. He's two levels up on his opponent, 4 0 and 5, has made his way to multiple counter gank situations. You can see, you know, nearly 4,000 gold up on his lane opponent. Makes up majority of this gold lead, honestly, by himself, and it's going to be so damn hard to shut him down in these team fight situations. I'm going to keep an eye on how these uh, wards position themselves out because if I was an Avant fan right now, I would want to see a bit of a Hail Mary, a bit of a turnaround, a bit of a team fight like we expected to see for the previous Drake. Drake number three, that would have been. Let's see how they can try and contest when it comes to an all out close quarter battle. That's definitely where this composition will shine. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, maybe even picking someone in rotation. Right now with Aurelia in the bottom lane, you have a couple of squishy members still left on the top side of the map. And, you know, members like Shock still going to be able to dish out a lot of damage. Uh, so I certainly agree, you know, got to be able to pick your fight. However, we've seen games stall out in the OPL so far. We've seen teams make mistakes. Uh, you know, always that situation where you can just look to play a little bit more passively. Yeah, wait for the moments, because if we have seen teams play a little bit too passively or maybe get a little bit over eager, it has, for the most part, spelt disaster. That one team fight where they were trying to force the agenda just a little bit too hard, mm -hmm. and the game as a result too late into the stages is wrapped up just like that. And it's going to be maybe Wits End picked up for Mimic here as well. He gets himself a Negatron, cl Negatron Cloak as well as a stopwatch, so you can see right now. Pretty much online as far as where... Aurelia wants to be, I think, has just kind of admitted to the fact that probably going to have to take place in some of these team fights. Um, so needs to be able to itemize a little bit more defensively than maybe just the side lane split pusher, which maybe you would have expected to see something like Titanic Hydra or even Steric's Gage rush for the straight one-on-one. -on -one. Um, yep. And really it's Shock that holds a lot of the pressure right now for Avant Gaming to have some really good ultimates or impact in these team fights. Uh, has been quite... Quiet so far, only uh, the one death and assist to his name. But hasn't really been involved in too many of these skirmishes, if any, quite honestly. Yep. Has definitely been uh, prioritized the bottom lane and the mid lane for farm. And you can see so by that score at 212 CS. Does have the Scepter online right now, so going to have some impact when it comes to the team fights if a fight were to continue. But this is the talking point right now here, Spawn. The Baron has been started. Yeah, they have absolutely no idea this is happening. It's just going to be a two-man Baron. It is going to fall down. No one from Avant Gaming knows that it's going on. Very nicely played from the Bombers. Very clean indeed. And, well, if we thought the situation was dire beforehand, 5k into 8k, now into a 10k situation with a double Infernal potentially on the cards in 30 seconds. 
You've got summoners available. You've got kills being picked up here for free, 1v1. It's looking like bombers are looking at a one lane situation, going for the win. Yeah, actually nothing in life is free. Mimic just pays the iron price there, takes his life. Uh, you know, throws out the ultimate, but no summoner spells burnt. And that's kind of disappointing for a Vine. You lose Baron on one side of the map. You're not even able to get multiple members down to the other side to create that mismatch and maybe a side lane pickup that you need to be able to do. And this is uh, Mimic just going all in. You can see uh, able to stun Chippies off the wall there. Looks like Chippies is doing all right. However, Hextech ultimatum quite late down here. And uh, Mimic just too far ahead at this stage. Very, very big at this stage of this item advantage. That's the Double Infernal and the Double Ocean, giving them a lot of staying power, a lot of extra damage. The ability to turtle up, utilize Baron to its full extent as they go to the bottom lane. Yeah, I think right now you can just siege with Azir. No one really has a health pool to be able to go with him. You see Mimic also in that mid lane, just playing the 4 1 nicely. While they're going to kind of rotate in between the two and keep both groups safe. And uh, with just how strong Ryoma is, level 16 on that Azir, you know, three and a half items already. Unless it is the cleanest engage onto him, I just don't see a way they win this. Yep, you thought it was hard to kill him before. He's got a Banshee, he's got his own tower, he's got a sizable lead. You walk at him, you will pay the price, and that is your own demise. As they split attention once again, the 1v1 takes place. It's soon to be a 2v1, soon to be a 3v1 if anybody else Maybe gets involved. Around. But Bro gets amongst it and says goodbye to Miro again. Do not get too far ahead of yourself. You're free, six and two. Shutdowns do come across, and it's a double at that. If I've ever seen one, they want to chase on. They want to get more. They're going to deny the kill onto Rogue, and it's doubles just like that. Yeah, it certainly is. However, only one kill traded across. They will be able to stall out this Baron buff. Big shutdowns going across to the way of Avant Gaming. Stem the bleeding for now. That was an overreach from the Pommers. I feel like rotating back towards the player as opposed to just taking bottom lane, breaking the base. Uh, would have been the smarter thing to do. Let's take another look at it. I mean, at this stage, the fight's already lost, you know. If you just keep the Azir in that bottom lane, especially with Galio, should be able to threaten the dive. They've sent multiple members across. Instead, they try and defend their Korean top lane, or it does not work out for them. And now the game will be a little bit more protracted. From a, I suppose, conscious stream fault, do you feel as if the Bombers were like, well, we're so far ahead in this game. We have such a sizable lead in terms of Drake buffs, in terms of Baron, in terms of gold, in terms of items, in terms of levels. Literally pretty much everything you ever want in League of Legends. We can afford to be greedy in terms of just straight pushing. Let's get some kills. I mean, potentially. I mean, there's also that championship mentality that uh, Kobe always likes to take about. It's like, hey, we're the champions. How dare you try and touch our top later? Like, we're going to be able to clean up this fight. You know, we'll be able to take it. And I think... Uh, there is that little bit of, you know, trying to crush opponents, but you can just beat them out strategically at that point in the game. They've already created the number mismatch that they needed to break the base. Um, so, yeah, certainly a little bit of a mistake there for Bombers, but still, you know, they're 10,000 gold up. Got double Infernal for themselves. They're so far ahead in every single role. Like 5,000 gold lead right now for Ioma yeah. alone is a big team advantage. So certainly don't think it's going to be all that much. Although Mimic again in trouble. Mimic is indeed in trouble. Chippies does find this time the value with that Hextech ultimatum. And it's going to be nice to boost up their profile and give them some gold to try and mirror and match. And that was kind of done. a 1v1 because yeah. Sybil wasn't in range there. Did throw out the ultimate, but it missed. So Chippies just able to find the straight solo kill. Uh, yeah, as you see it in fast motion, that's exactly what happened. Exactly uh, what also happened. Also got the Bang. flash out. So he just jumped off the wall, able to get the stun, connects with the second Q, and uh, picks up the kill. That means that bottom lane turret now also in danger of falling to a Vine. Let's take it one more time. So yeah, it's just going to be a stun. Yeah. I mean, that's a very nice dodge, actually, out of Chippy's there. Dodges out on the stun. And you can see the yeah, flash was used, but it was certainly going to be a one team fight, regardless for the Camille. I suppose the most important part for me at this stage is the fact that Ryoma, being the big, big carry that he is in this game, that he's developed into, has still retained that bounty. How sweet the feeling would be if Avant are able to find him out in a situation. I kind of think that Avant don't want to. <laughs> if you're ever in a 5v5 scenario, Ryoma right now is going to destroy you. He's flame horizon his opponent, up 100 CS. I think that the only way you win this game is you keep killing Mimic in the sideline, you get Chippy's that big lead and you just split push your way to victory. Going to be a difficult team fight if I've ever seen one. So I think you kind of just want to play stall tactic in this mid lane and uh, hope Chippies can clean things up on the side. The 24 minute games. Look how much damage he does. They just aren't there. But shot, yeah. 
Talk about shock factor. That was a lot of pain to his face with just a couple of abilities. But I feel like the 24 minute games aren't there because teams are making mistakes. You know, that should have been a push in through the bottom lane. Base 100% should have been broken here for the Bombers lineup. However, they try and defend Mimic. You know, they make that mistake and now the game just becomes a little bit more difficult to play because Chippies has himself those items. Slows things down, but not without a team fight breaking out just before that objective phase coming into play. Miru going to utilize that Zonia, is going to get some time, going to look to try and do whatever they can. Mimic finding that one crucial pick. And Only as I 14 seconds until the Baron is up yeah. as well, so certainly a very good pick there. They're going to have to delay for at least 30 seconds without a mid laner, plus the five seconds for the teleports to come in. Without Chippies here, I think you honestly just look for a steal if you can, otherwise you let it go. Yep. Definitely a perfectly timed engage. And this is getting shredded. At this stage, you are relying on the likes of Sejuani to pull off the biggest smite ever seen. But it's not even going to be worthwhile at this stage. Chippies is just on split push duties. And this is the thing. If the Camille can continue to kill the Aurelia in the side lane, you have a hope of winning this game. However, Chippies has stayed around for a very long time to get this turret. Now needs to run away. Should be able to do so. So it gets two turrets for a Baron. Not the best trade I've ever seen, but certainly better than a poke in the eye with a sharp stick. Yeah, that's not really much fun. <laughs> yeah. do, do you speak from experience? Uh, I mean, I wear glasses. I wear protection <laughs> at all stages here. Safety inspectors love you. But it should just be another dragon going across. going to be the fifth of the game for the Bombers. It's going to be Elder spawning after that as well. And once again, I feel like Avant kind of just got to run this 1-3-1, this deception game. They can't really look for any form of team fight. But quite honestly, at the same sentiment, Bombers could be quite happy thinking, well, we have five buffs to our name when that Elder does come across. Yeah, mm -hmm. if you want to try and play Split Push, we will have so much staying power that if we do go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, as we've seen Mimic and Chippies do, then Mimic will have such a huge advantage now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if they get Elder Dragon, this game is, like, well and truly going to be difficult to uh, win if you are the AV lineup. Miru takes himself maybe one of the stranger ultimates, to be honest, there, in the Galio ult. Kind of not that much use under this turret at the moment. The base is going to be broken. Maybe looking to try and back up They're going to try and fight here, I think. Yeah, that would be the suggestion that I'm seeing as a result. Maybe looking to try and back up uh, back up Isles on the LSOZ engage to try and find that crucial pick. But whilst they're all grouped up like this, it might not be the situation they're after, but they do turn their attention onto Ryoma. Not looking so good, because look how much damage that Matt Man can do. He finds one on towards Mirror. He finds a double kill onto Camille. And they're just going to go left, right, and center. That's the quads. Can they get the clean five-man ace onto Shocks? They're going on in. It's not without casualties, but do Bombers even care? They have one objective in mind, and that is to go for the end. Yeah, it certainly is. I mean, just such a beautiful team fight there from the Bombers. Ryoma stands and delivers, and they will pick up the win. That they will indeed. A bit of a slugfest that had moments where you question what they were doing. Were they complacent, or were they just having fun playing League of Legends? It seems to be the latter here for the Bombers as they go on in. A perfect game here from Rioma. Yeah, absolutely. 6-0 and 8. The mid laner of the Bombers stands tall. Get themselves back to that 1-1 one, one on the scoreboard. You can see Ro getting around his new jungler as well. Very impressive showing, and I think uh, Avant had windows in this game, but yeah. honestly weren't able to make it stick, and I think... Uh, you know, that's what happens when you've got a jungler playing off brawl against one of the best mid laners in the OPL. It's going to be a tough game, and, you know, they tried to take opportunities, but weren't able to uh, close it out. No, they weren't. And uh, they definitely had an idea in mind. They had the ability to try and force those things forward. But I feel like the displacement factor that we highlighted in the draft was a key element for them, uh, for the side of the Bombers. The ability to try and shut things down. Azir getting crucial picks very early on into the yep. game. Being able to come online very early as a result. And just snowball the game to a situation where you literally couldn't touch the man. Yeah, I mean, what kind of happened is they just read the top lane ganks like really well. And I think gank number one, when Mimic was able to trade back. And then the fact that they got Ryoma up to the next two in the top side of the jungle. You know, able to pick up a triple kill in one of them. Uh, just really set the tone for this game. Wilder was much more active in the early game as well. That's what you expect out of Rek'Sai players, you know, the ability to impact the map. I think he was level three when he picked up first blood yeah. in the mid lane. So, you know, much better showing today and I think much more cohesion from this Bombers lineup. And that's what I keep stressing, you know, brand new team, brand new coach. It is going to take time. However, they are good enough to take the victory over an Avant Gaming lineup that does have two subs and is still showing some pretty good fight. Definitely showing some good fire and I'm sure they will uh, 
not be too upset about the performance today, going toe to toe against. I a think very, they've had a very good very weekend, to be honest. No, I think, absolutely. Yeah, I think if you're a Vaughn Gaming coming out of this weekend, stealing a victory, you know, getting some good time into someone like Isles, and you know, obviously going to go back to Mammoth Academy is very good opportunity for the young man. Yeah. But Chippy's had a couple of solo kills in this game. You know, there are some promising signs here for the Avant Gaming lineup when Gunkrab and Aladoric return. Well, it's not all doom and gloom for the boys on blue, but we do have some boys uh, on the couch. One wearing blue, the rest, well, not really. I'm in blue.